I'm so happy for you. The rain has not taken your voice away. And nobody on earth, nobody by the river, nobody in the jungle will take your dominion away in Jesus' name. Tonight, I don't just want to talk about dominion, I want to operate in dominion. And I want connection. Where are you? Connection. Where are you? Connection. And as I connect with you, heaven will connect with you. Power will connect with you. Dominion will connect with you. You will never be the same again in Jesus' name. For all those who are online, I want you to push everything aside. Because tonight is a special night of connection. Online, radio, television, anywhere, any country, any continent, it's coming your way. What are you? Father, in the name of Jesus. We well, thank you because you are mighty God, a never failing God, a miracle working God, our creator, redeemer, and the one that gives us dominion. Lord, I pray tonight everyone will have total, complete, full, and free, and fresh dominion in Jesus' name. Confirm your word in every life and manifest dominion in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down tonight. We we'll continue a global crusade on the theme complete dominion. And tonight I'm reading to you from First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. First Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 57, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory, the triumph, the dominion through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's thanking God. And you know, if you thank God in your life for the dominion to come, look at Jericho walls standing, and the people appeared as if Jericho walls will conquer them. But they went around one day, second day, and on the seventh day, while the walls were still up, they shouted the shout of praise and the shout of thanksgiving, and the Jericho walls fell down flat. And when you say thanks be to God, even while the cancer is still there, thanks be to God, while the blindness is still there, thanks be to God, while the paralysis is still there, thanks be to God, when it appears, the walls of demarcation between you and victory, the walls are still there, and you thank the the Lord, by the time we say the final amen tonight, all your Jericho walls are gone. But thanks be to the to God, which giveth us the victory, the triumph, the dominion through our Lord Jesus Christ. And now in Judges chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 13. Judges chapter 5, verse 13. Then he made him that remained to have dominion over the nobles, over the powers, over the principalities, he made him that remained to have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty, that unconquerable enemy, and that unconquerable personality in your life tonight. The Lord makes you to have dominion. The Lord makes me to have dominion. Dominion tonight, I'm talking to you on our threefold dominion in Christ. Our threefold dominion in Christ. 
my, I make it personal, my own threefold dominion in Christ. I'm talking for myself, talk for yourself. My threefold dominion in Christ. The Lord affirm it in your life. The Lord confirm it in your life. And the Lord put it in place in your life in Jesus' name. When it says about our, it means everyone coming. I will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in the family of God, in the people of God, in the family of God, our threefold dominion. The people in the first century, they believed in the Lord, our threefold dominion, and the people at this present time, anywhere and everywhere, where two or three are gathered in my name, where two or three, they pray in my name, where two or three, they agree in my name, must touch in anything i will do it for them our mine and yours yours and mine i will not miss my own i said i will not miss my own our threefold dominion our threefold victory our threefold triumph our threefold power our threefold authority in christ Christ has come and has come to bring us dominion. He has come to bring us victory, victory over sin, victory over the strong enemy in your life, and victory over Satan and over the supplanter, over the evil one. Total victory in what victory? external victory all round victory the Lord has come to give us tonight you will not miss it your salvation you will not miss it your healing you will not miss it your deliverance you will not miss it and in whatever area and in whichever area of your life you want dominion instant dominion internal dominion Immediate dominion is coming your way. Tonight, tonight, the Lord will wipe your tears away. And everything that dominated your life, anything and everything that oppressed your life, the Lord will clear everything away tonight in Jesus' name. Our threefold dominion in Christ. There are three things we're looking at before we pray. Number one, disengagement and salvation from enticing sins. The Lord will disengage you from everything internally, everything morally, everything spiritually that had had dominion over your life, even tonight in Jesus' name disengagement and salvation from enticing sins. Number two, deliverance from strong and steering strangers. Deliverance, total deliverance. Deliverance, perfect deliverance. Deliverance, complete deliverance from the strong and snaring strangers. Number three, dominion. Help me shout dominion. If that's your Lord tonight, shout dominion. Is that your expectation tonight? Shout dominion. Dominion over sicknesses and evil spirits. They'll be under your feet. Under my feet. Every enemy under my feet. Every oppressor under my feet. Every stranger under my feet. And the power that had been operating stronger than your life under your feet tonight in Jesus name dominion over sicknesses and evil spirits number one disengagement and salvation from enticing sins sins that's what the devil uses as a bait to draw you and to drag you and to pull you into a snare. I'm sure you've heard about fishing. The fishermen, they go to the seaside. 
or to the riverside. And they have the line, they have the hook, they have the bait. And then the bait is something that will attract, that will entice the fish. And when the fisherman throws the bait and throws the hook into the sea, into the river, the fish does not see the hook, the fish only sees the bait. And then as he's running after the beach, and he thinks, what a free gift. Look at that man on top there at the seashore. He loves me so much, and he knows that I love this kind of beach. And the fish does not know that it's a beach to draw him to death. That's exactly what the devil does. He brings a beach. It appears sweet. It appears inviting, it appears attractive, but there's a hook there that the man, the woman, the human being does not see. And the bitch in the hook, as the sinner, as the human being, the man, the woman, as they want to suck in the bitch, the hook catches him and the devil draws him. That's why the Lord tonight. First of all, he wants to disengage you from that bait and from that enticing sin so that as you are disengaged from that enticing sin, salvation will come to you. Yeah. Salvation. Somebody shout salvation. Yeah. Point number one, disengagement and salvation from enticing sins. We're looking at Isaiah, and we're looking at chapter 59, reading there from verse 1, it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that he cannot save, that he cannot forgive, that he cannot disengage you from any bit. The Lord's hand is not shortened, that that hand, the mighty hand, the creative hand, the mighty hand, and the powerful hand, that hand is going to work in your life tonight. Yeah. With power, disengaging power, with power, forgiving power, with power demonstrable in your life tonight, in Jesus' name. Yeah. It's the Lord's hand that can save. It's the Lord's hand that can bring peace of mind. It's the Lord's hand that can bring renewal and change and transformation in your life. Behold, you have to behold it. You have to turn away your mind, your heart, your sight. You have to turn away your personality from every other thing and behold the Christ of Calvary and behold the Christ of power and behold the Christ who is mighty enough to disengage you from all enticing sin Tonight, it will do it. Yeah. I said, tonight, it will do it. Yeah. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. It can hear, it will hear. Yeah. It can see, it will see. And it sees you there tonight where you are. And the moment you make up your mind and you say, yes, Lord, I'm here. Yes, Lord, I want to be disengaged from all the enticing sins tonight. It will move on your behalf. And his mighty hand, the saving hand, his powerful hand tonight will disengage you from everything that had held you and hooked you into that sin in Jesus' name. Look at verse 2 there. It tells us in verse 2, it says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid a space from you that he will not hear. What does that mean? You know, sometimes you are here, and then another person who wants to help you is there. And between you and the helper, between you and the provider, between you and the one that comes to set you free, there are blocks being set like a wall or partition 
to separate you from the one that will help you, from your helper, from your savior. From your healer, from your dear block. Then another sin, another block. Another sin, another block. Another transgression, another block. By the time you look up, there is a wall made by the blocks of your sin between you and the deliverer. And the Lord's hand is not short inch, and the Lord's ear is not heavy, but your sins that have now erected a wall of demarcation, a wall of partition between you and the Savior, you and the Helper. Now that wall is there separating you from the power that will disengage you from all your enticements. And what we do is that we say, ah, look at that wall that I erected. Look at that wall that I built up between me and the Savior, between me and my helper. And then we break that wall down tonight, and then there is a free course and a free way, and the hand of the Lord will touch you. Yeah. And dominion will come to you. Yeah. And power will come to you. And salvation will come to you. Yeah. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid the space from you that he will not hear. We're going to tear down that wall tonight in every life. In your life, we tear down that wall. In your family, we tear down that wall. In your personality, in your behavior, your character, we tear down that wall of sin, of transgression, of iniquity, and then the Lord's hand will touch you tonight. Look at verse 3 there. In verse 3 there, it tells us, For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity, and your leaves have spoken lies, your tongue have muttered perverseness. And then in verse 4, it tells us in verse 4, none calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity, and they speak lies, they conceive mischief, they are pregnant of mischief. Mischief, evil imagination, evil thought, evil action, they are pregnant with iniquity, and they bring forth iniquity. But tonight, a change has come. If you cooperate with God tonight, a change has come. If you cooperate with the Almighty tonight, a change will come in your life in Jesus' name. Remember, remember, remember that wall of partition, that wall of demarcation erected by every block of your sin, every block of your evil, every block of your transgression will tear down that wall. I said we tear down that wall. You repent and turn away and you say, I disown all those blocks, all the transgression, I disown them. And the wall of iniquity will come down and then Christ the Savior, Christ the Redeemer, he will come to your life. He will save you. It will redeem you. It will turn your life around for the better tonight in Jesus' name. Look at Proverbs chapter 28, reading from verse 13. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. What does that mean? Remember again that wall, this block of sin this brick of transgression and this item of evil building the wall and then instead of tearing the wall you go to plaster that wall you go to strengthen that wall you go to shelter and to shield and to cover that wall of iniquity so that even people will not see he that covereth the sin shall not prosper Tonight, you will not cover your sin. Amen. 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 
the Lord will clear away that sin out of your life. Every block you will tear down. Every brick you will tear down. Every sin that makes that sin prevalent in your life. Standing as if no storm can pull down that wall, you will not cover up tonight. You know, sometimes when there is an evil doer, and that evil doer, like a sneaky serpent, like a crawling serpent, is going to destroy you. And then you build shelter and you build cover to protect that serpent and that scorpion and that evil. You're doing yourself a great evil because that snake, that serpent, that scorpion is going to grow up. And when it grows up, although you have been covering it and you have been protecting it, then it comes to destroy you. When you cover your sin, one, you'll not have the mercy of the grace of God. Two, you'll not have the mercy of the love of God. Three, you're not going to have the mercy of the compassion of God. Four, you're not going to have the mercy of the salvation of the Lord because you are holding to your sin but when you're ruthless with that sin and you say this sin must go then forgiveness will come to you but whoso, whoso confesses and forsaketh them not only confessing I know a lot of people that go to church on Sunday they confess they confess Lord I'm a sinner I've done what I should not have done I have not done what I should have done. They confess. They go back home. They continue. Then they come back the following Sunday and they confess, Lord, I'm a bad person. I'm a wicked person. If thou shalt mark iniquity, who will stand? But I'm a sinner. They confess. They go back home. They come to the crusade. And at the crusade, if you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, raise up your hand. They raise up their hands. I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. After the crusade, they go back again to their sin. Those walls do not have mercy. They're still erecting that wall of demarcation. They're still erecting that wall of division between the Savior and the sinner. But he that confesseth and forsaketh them, and he says, I throw that thing away. I pull that wall down. I destroy that wall of demarcation and division between me and the Almighty God. I pull them down. He that confesses and forsaketh them tonight as you have the opportunity. Tonight as you have the chance with your mouth you confess, with your heart you forsake. You say I'm not going to allow that evil to come back. Give me a good amen. amen. I'm not going to allow that sin to take root and take effect in my life. Give me another amen. amen. Enough is enough. I have gone the wrong way enough number of times enough number of years and I will not go that direction again he that confesses and forsaketh them all the sins will have the mercy of God mercy is coming tonight forgiveness is coming tonight and the joy of salvation and the victory and the dominion of salvation over sin above sin